So now we come to the overall winner. Uh, and our overall winner is Adam Mellos Faser and his colleagues. Uh, we might get some names in a minute. Okay. Uh, his colleagues in the Economics, Policy and Statistics section of the House of Commons Library for their document, Key Issues for the New Parliament. Good communication of statistics is something we believe is of crucial importance. Key Issues was designed as a briefing document to set the scene for the new MPs arriving after last year's election. It combined text, tables and graphics, including some innovative graphics, to present information in a way that was interesting, accessible, politically neutral and relevant. While designed for MPs, it's available to everyone on the web and can be accessed via iPhones and similar devices. Having been sent in printed form to just the 227 new MPs, the library found it was in high demand among the older MPs too, and the initial print run sold out within a few days. Importantly, it seems to have resulted in new MPs starting to use the statistical sections of the House of Commons Library far more quickly than new MPs have done in the past, something clearly desirable. So it's an excellent example of communicating statistical results in a style that clearly understands and takes account of the user need, commented one of our judges, and that sums up why it's the overall winner. Thank you very much. It's a um, fantastic honour to accept this award on behalf of the, uh, the team responsible for it. Um, I should add it was very much a team effort. Um, there were over 60 contributors um, in total, um, including uh, social statisticians as well as economic statisticians, I should add, um, and lots of policy specialists as well. And I think integration of policy and, and statistics was one of its great strengths. Um, and everyone involved used a, uh, a lot of imagination to think of ways of conveying their information to um, to all the new MPs, um, um, who are a, a very um, varied audience and in many cases a, a, a decidedly non-expert one. Um, I can, however, take personal blame for the rather lurid orange and purple colour scheme that we use for the book. Um, it's difficult to come up with colours in Parliament. Red, blue and yellow are already taken. <laughs> and um, everything, therefore, ends up being green. Um, the idea that we, uh, that we, we had... Um, take um, to produce the book um, originated from a, a very similar publication uh, by our colleagues in the Australian Parliament. Um, and since then, it's been adopted by uh, parliaments and assemblies um, around the world, uh, from Northern Ireland and um, um, through Europe, um, Canada, and um, today I was in uh, contact with colleagues in New Zealand who are doing a very similar thing. Um, and they say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Um, however, I can um, give you a word of warning um, if anyone's thinking of producing a statistical publication in orange and purple um, from the Daily Mail website, um, which says, I think it's a, a, a commenter, uh, the singer probably thought she would win some style points for her brave choice of outfit by opting to follow the current trend of colour blocking. Although the bold colours are beautiful on their own, Cheryl Cole's decision to wear an unflattering ruffled orange top with purple trousers just looked a disaster. I really don't know how this woman could ever be considered a style icon. <laughs> well, consider yourselves warned. Thanks very much. <laughs>